So last season I actually made my uh, my little guy Hank a pair of skis. I called them Hank's planks. They turned out turned out great. He loved them. They're twin tips. I couldn't find any twin tips this small. It's just kind of fun to have skis that I made on his feet. For this project, basically what I used was Baltic birch plywood. I was actually given a lot of the materials by a friend of mine, Dirk, who makes skis in his back shed. His wife, Kelsey, actually did the graphics for these skis. So thank you to both of you guys. I couldn't have done this project without you guys. I got the edge material, the base material uh, from them. I bought the fiberglass at the local hardware store. You can buy it at a plastic supply store, the same place that you're going to get your, your West system resin and, and hardener. Of course I used my, my PPE, I used a table saw for the build, but you could easily use a circular saw. A router is uh, invaluable. You definitely need it, you know, to make things like, you know, there's the mold. I use my, my drill, my shop vac. If you have a, a vacuum pump, that would be great. Um, I did use a car in this video, which you'll see at the end. Let's see if I can find them here. Oh, there they are. I found spring clamps to be really expensive, so I actually made my own clamps. I took a piece of uh, ABS pipe. You could probably do it with PVC as well. Cut them in small sections, just sliced it right through there, and it'll just clamp right on. CA glue, super glue works really well. Don't use hot glue. I did it with uh, really simple tools in my garage. You know, I don't have a CNC machine. I don't have any specialized equipment. That's sort of the idea behind this. I want people to be able to do this easily. I'm going to show you around basically step by step how I did this. The process is exactly the same whether you're making a kid's pair of skis or you're making a, a, a big boy pair of skis or big girl pair of skis. To begin, I traced a ski I had for Hank already onto a piece of MDF that I'd used to make the blank. I'm making twin tips, so I need to create a tail shape. I used a piece of flexible plastic to do this. Using a jigsaw, I carefully and slowly cut the blank into the correct shape. I drilled a hole in the middle of the blank using a hole saw, and using a quarter inch router bit, routed a channel into the blank. This channel will be helpful later when using this blank to cut out the cores and the bases. Hankster would even come out to the garage from time to time to help supervise. Using the blank as a template, I traced the shape onto the ski onto a place of Baltic birch plywood, then rough cut the shape with the jigsaw before placing the plywood core onto the blank with the shop vac connected to the hole, which is used to secure the blank to the core for routering using a flush cut trim bit. This process ensures each core to be exact copies of each other. Over at the router table, I used a 45 degree chamfer bit to taper the core edges. Then using a hand planer, I tapered the cores to the correct stiffness. You can use a belt sander or if you have a bench planer, you can build a jig to do this more accurately. Using the blanks again with a shop vac turned on to secure the base material in place, I used a trim bit in my router to cut out the base material. Be sure to do this with a rough side facing up. Then I cut the metal edges to the correct length. You can use a grinder or crimp the material and then snapping it the way I did here. Using clamps to hold the edges, I used CA glue to glue the edges into place. To make the form, I used some MDF I had laying around. I cut strips in the MDF and then traced the profile of the ski onto the strips, being sure to mark the tip and tail not to mix them up. Then very carefully cut this profile out using a jigsaw. I then use this cutout as my template for the rest of the mold. I secure the cutout onto pieces of MDF that I wanted to cut next, spacing the top and the bottom of the pieces the same distance of the bearing on my router bits. Then using a flush trim bit, I made an exact copy of the original pieces. Repeat this process as necessary to build the mold to the correct thickness. I then bolted the mold sections together to ensure the mold remained monolithic during the pressing process. Movement of the mold sections would create a non-uniform ski profile. For peel ply, I used a sheet of poly and just poked holes in it using this wallpaper removal tool. For the layup process, I used a resin to hardener ratio of 3 to 1 and mixed it really well. I started by wetting down the bases, then lay the first layer of the cloth and wetted that as well. I forgot to put the graphics under the cloth, so I just peeled it up and re-squeegeed the cloth. I then wetted the cores with resin before putting them in place to ensure uniform coverage of the resin. Then covered the cores with a second sheet of cloth, which was of course wetted and squeegeed. I printed the graphics onto rice paper, which will absorb the resin and become part of the skis.
I then placed the skis into the vacuum bag, which I made with poly. The peel ply was placed over the skis and then two towels to absorb the resin that seeps through the holes in the peel ply. Manually seal the edges of the vacuum bag, pressing the butyl caulk to create an airtight seal. I hooked up my vacuum to the bag and turned it on to draw down the vacuum bag. With the bag still under vacuum, I placed everything in the mold. I placed a piece of camping foam over the bag and closed the valve, sealing the vacuum in place. Then disconnected the vacuum hose to make it easier to pick everything up. I placed it on top of the mold and then using some ratchet straps, I placed some pressure on the mold to keep it in place. I then put the mold in the floor of my garage and just drove my car onto it. Note that the vacuum is hooked up again. I drew the vacuum every hour or so while the skis cured. After curing at room temperature for 12 hours, I removed the skis from the vacuum bag and allowed further cure for 12 hours before cutting out with a jigsaw. Henry got a lot of use out of his skis this year. He really liked them. We're really looking forward to the ski season coming up so that he can use them again. In previous videos, I was talking about Leo's project, the uh, Samson Boat Company rebuild of Tally Ho. In August, I said any plans that I sold for my bed desk, I would donate half the money to Leo. I sold about five plans. I was really hoping to sell more, so that's about 50 bucks going to Leo, but I'm just gonna throw in everything. So it's gonna be 100 bucks going to Leo. So thanks to everybody who took the effort to actually buy the plans from me to support Leo's project. It's kind of a really cool thing. I think he's gotta be the hardest working guy on the internet. I always feel bad sitting on the couch watching his videos, to be honest. If you like this video, let me know, give me a thumbs up. Maybe if you want, you can subscribe. Otherwise, you know, share it around, show your friends. Thanks very much. Watch for my next video.